वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर वेनु सटीनी फ्रॉम द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ फिलोसफी यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ हैदराबाद दिस इज लॉजिक वन एंड द नेम ऑफ द मॉड्यूल ऑन विच आई बी टॉकिंग इज फिलोसफिकल इश्यूज सेंटरिंग राउंड सेंटेंशियल लॉजिक और पुट इट सिंपली इट इज मॉडल लॉजिक वी हैव डन इन आर अर्ली मॉड्यूल्स डिफरेंट सिस्टम्स ऑफ सेंटेंशियल लॉजिक and we have seen that we can evolve different ways or mechanism of checking validity of arguments or truth of logical sentences in different methods whether it's truth tree method or axiomatic system or natural deduction system or even basic uh, or foundational thing like truth table here what we will do is we will try to extend this sentential logic what do we mean by extension is uh, apart from the existing set of connectives those two functional connectives we will introduce some more connectives with a difference that this new connectives which we will introduce are not two functional they are more like quantifiers which we have seen before like universal quantifier or existential quantifier in the sense the model uh, connective that we will introduce is monadic or unary unary connective so we will see how we can understand the use of such modal concepts or or or, or this connective in the light of uh, two functional systems like sentential logic now the immediate question then what is this modal logic i would like to put it very simply that it is nothing but extension of sentential logic in what sense it is an extension maybe we can look at a proposition and then i will explain in what way it is an extension a proposition like aristotle is a logician this sentence can be verified to be true or false in this case it is true given our sentential logic we can also deny the truth of this sentence by saying that aristotle is not a logician that will become a false sentence whether you assert or deny it is still within the domain of uh, sentential logic suppose i modify this sentence and add the word must like aristotle must be a logician and how are we to understand the truth of this sentences or rather the sentence i have introduced the word must so in other word the modal logic is an attempt to explain such use of word must a given sentence like aristotle is a logician in this sense we are going to be dealing with a set of verbs which are called modal verbs and which in turn are actually subset of auxiliary verbs now given a sentence aristotle is a logician uh, and then a modified or extension of this sentence aristotle must be a logician we can see this sentence from let us say two different perspective a grammarian uh, will immediately notice the addition of the word must in place of is uh, and they will say uh, such verb or the function of this verb is to uh, express the attitude of the speaker towards the subject matter so whether there is a conviction involved in the truth of the sentence is crucial so there is expressing the attitude whether that aristotle is a logician i am expressing strong or weak conviction that is attitude of the speaker the other approach is more like objective in which sense some uh, philosophers and logicians in the past have uh, discussed the first one we call it subjective in the sense that it has to do with attitude towards the truth claim of the uh, sentence the second part is called objective in contrast to subjective because here uh, let me give another example that um, uh, gold is yellow now the objective re reading will be gold must be yellow in the context of modal logic now how is the uh, how are we to understand the relation between subject term and object term uh, 
is yellow, which is the object term, a necessary or essential feature of uh, gold. Thus, yellowness in her or inherently reside in gold. That, so, the objective idea is that whenever I use the word must, the gold must be yellow, I am trying to specify specific relation that holds between a property called yellow and an object or an entity called gold. So here, no suggestion of my attitude that there is a state of affairs out there and such kind of relation holds between attribute or property and the entity. So this is a detached attitude in which sense we can read it as objective reading. Now, as a logician, we are not committed to either. We, are not, we will not read it from the perspective of subjective or objective. Ours is different. But before we go on to explain this one, uh, let me explain what is uh, model logic in the sense the root word. Technically speaking, model is um, uh, uh, coming from uh, a word of verb, a set of verbs called model verbs. But here we will qualify these model verbs by saying elliptic model verb or elliptic model logic. So what I'm saying now about must or necessary is called elliptic. In Greek, it simply means truth. Elliptic means truth. So verbs or uh, words which deals with truth, it is called elliptic model logic. Now, as I said, how are we to understand the truth claim that Aristotle must be a logician? Uh, it is not like simply verifying uh, whether Aristotle is a logician or not. The word must is, is, is a much stronger claim. What is the nature of the truth of this sentence? That is our concern. So in order to handle this, we have to do a little bit of manipulation. The word must will be modified by a, a word called necessary. In which case, we will bring the word necessary to the extreme last of the sentence and put it in this phrase like it is necessary that Aristotle is a logician. Instead of reading Aristotle is a logician, we will say it is necessary that Aristotle is a logician. I mean, now we are looking at the verb must in the sense of operator. In the sentential logic, think about negative operator. It is not the case that Aristotle is a logician. Now, negative is negation is at the beginning of the sentence. Or think about universal quantifier. Uh, for all values of x, if x is p, then x is q. I mean, all and some are pushed to the leftmost of the sentence, and now they are quantifiers. Here also, it is necessary are behaving like a kind of uh, 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 operator, but it is monadic operator, and it is not truth functional. Then uh, we we have certain advantages now. When we see it as an operator. We will not read this sentence, or rather this phrase, model phrase, it is necessary as either commit, committing to objective claim or subjective claim. In that sense, we have advantage. Now, it is claiming about the nature of the sentence as such. Going on, we will identify some basic concept. In any extension of uh, uh, sentential logic, we will need some basic concept. Here, for this, we will identify necessity, the notion of necessity as the basic concept. And there are two other related concepts. One is possible and the other impossible. So what we'll do is we will try to define the notion of possibility and impossibility with the help of this concept necessity. So, and this, any sentences involving these um, concepts uh, will be called model sentences. So I can think of it is possible that Aristotle is a logician or it is impossible that Aristotle is a logician or it is necessary that Aristotle is a logician. All these are now model sentences. Given these model operators, we can generate more complex sentences also along with the truth sentential, truth functional connectives. For instance, 
it is possible that either Aristotle is a logician or Aristotle is a politician. Uh, so we can, along with these model concepts, with the help of truth functional connectives, generate more and more complex sentences. We will see some of this later on. But uh, just like uh, interdefinability thesis of quantificational logic, even here we are going to make another claim which is interdefinability of model concepts. What do we mean by this is that once we take a, a, an operator like necessary as the basic, we will define the other two with the help of uh, this basic concept. By the thesis of interdefinability, we will try to define the other two operators, possible and impossible with the help of this word necessity. How are we to do it? By showing equivalence. So, an expression like, it is possible that P is equivalent to, it is not necessary that not P. P stands for a proposition. I repeat again. It is possible that P is equivalent to, it is not necessary that not P. It is impossible that P is equivalent to, it is necessary that not P. I repeat, it is impossible that P is equivalent to, it is necessary that not P. Notice that uh, on the left hand side is the word possible and impossible. On the right hand side is the word necessary. In other words, we are using the word necessary or necessity to explain what is possible and impossible. So, there are uh, more complex questions that can be uh, raised given this understanding so far. For example, by claiming that P is possible, are we also allowed to infer that P is necessarily possible? Or is it a case that if P is possible, it is only possibly possible? That is one way. It can become more complex when you say that if it is necessary the case that P implies Q and given P is necessary, can we go on to claim that Q is therefore also necessary? Such kind of complicated, uh, complicated reading can occur. But those complications will result in the birth of different, different uh, model systems which we may have to explore in the next module. For now, we will again explore another crucial ingredient of uh, any logical system and that we call it uh, contradiction, the notion of contradiction. So, unless we have this notion of contradic contradiction in a logical system, it is impossible to build any logical system. So how do we understand this notion of contradiction? We compare two sentences like, it is necessary that P. What will be the contradiction of this sentence? The contradictory sentence is this, that it is possible that not P. See, it is necessary that not P. Its contradictory sentence is, it is possible that not P. The other could be, it is possible that P. Its contradictory sentence will be, it is necessary that not P. It is possible that P, its contradictory sentence will be, it is necessary that not P. So here we have defined a pair of contradictory sentences. We go on. We go back rather to the uh, basic idea of uh, a proposition. Let us say a sentence, birds fly or a bird flies. It's easy to determine the truth value of this sentence. But if I go on to add, it is necessary that birds fly. How are we to understand uh, this uh, model sentence? Because the conviction is much stronger the claim is much stronger, it is not, necess it is not easy to uh, determine the truth value of such a claim. Uh, now, model system is an attempt or model logic is an attempt to provide semantics, semantics, truth semantics for this kind of model sentences. However, there are other kind of sentences like uh, Hyderabad is either a city or Hyderabad is not a city. You may modify this sentence with uh, model operators like it is necessary that 
either Hyderabad is a city or it is not a city and this sentence is not problematic because this propositional sentence is tautologos. So it is not problematic even if I say it is necessary that either Hyderabad is a city or not a city because this is because the sentence is tautologos. The form P or not P we know is a logical sentence means it is tautologos. So any logical sentence if you modify with operator like necessity it becomes the truth value is not problematic at all. Now uh, the, 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 the proposition that I raised earlier birds fly and then from there it is necessary that birds fly. How are we to understand the meaning of this sentence? Uh, a logician or who is uh, known by the name Sol Kripke has given a semantic model and his model is called uh, sometimes Kripkean model or possible world semantics. Huh. So let us uh, see how this sentence can be symbolized just like symbolization of sentential logic because this symbolization help us to do uh, uh, formal derivation. So let us look at this uh, slide. It is necessary that P can be symbolized as box P. It is possible that P can be symbolized by uh, a diamond P. So we will use this standard symbolization that is box P will mean it is necessary that P or diamond P will be read as it is possible that P. Now how are we to understand this notion of possible worlds? Possible world semantics basically mean ways or different ways the world might have been. Let me uh, explain this with the help of example. Now I am sitting here but it is possible that means it could have been the case that I am sitting on a different chair or that I'll be speaking, I can be speaking from another angle. So these are possible ways of uh, uh, combining thing or state of affairs. So simply put possible world means a possible situation. A situation need to be described. So it's a description of a state of affairs or possible state of affairs. In other words, possible world uh, is uh, a kind of set of propositions. A set of propositions will give us a, a, a possible world. If uh, we are to define possible world in the language of set theory, then we can imagine a possible world with only one state of affairs. So, you see, the blue, the blue stands for a possible world is equal to a set with just one P, that is a sentence. So if uh, we are to define possible world way, possible world in the, in the way of a set theoretic language, then uh, it is just a set of sentences. How uh, different sentences can constitute to give a, a, a kind of picture of a reality. Uh, there are other claims, but we will not be uh, entering into those uh, contestation or philosophical issues like they don't uh, for somebody like Lewis he will not take possible world as a set of sentences he will think that uh, actually possible world are as real and as actual as, as, as this world so his understanding is different but for now the standard is we will treat possible world as a set of sentences so what do we mean when we say P is true in the light of possible world semantics I will look at the slide for this. When we say P is true, we are saying that P is true with respect to certain world, world uh, W prime. Even only if, short form is I double F, world semantically entails P. That is, that there is a world which can make the sentence P true. Or symbolically put, there is a valuation such that P given a world W prime then it is true that means a sentence is uh, true with respect to certain world hmm. how are we to understand a model sentence like box P which can be read as it is necessary that P we will read it like this box P is true if and only if P 
is true at all possible worlds or to be more precise p is true in all possible world which are accessible from the actual world or the referent world now these are commonsensical ways of uh, explaining model uh, model sentences so what do we mean by accessibility uh, the idea of a uh, possible world let us say uh, is not something like a, a science fiction world or a fairy tale world where we imagine the possibilities of many things no uh, it is uh, more like uh, our actual world alternative world world which are possible and uh, so when we talk about accessibility relation between worlds we are trying to understand the truth of certain sentence with respect to uh, n number of possible situations so one may say uh, that uh, aristotle is a logician or it is possible that aristotle is a politician in other word in certain world it is true that aristotle is a logician but with respect to another world which may not be true in this world in another world it is possible that aristotle is a politician so that gives us the idea of possibility and the accessibility relation for example we may want to say that um, mm, a river is flowing upward uh, it's a description of certain state of affairs but that world is not accessible from our world so though it may be claimed to be true uh, we cannot say this is true with respect to our world in a sense this we cannot say it is possible that a river is flowing upward in the sense that that world is not accessible to us or sometimes we can also claim that the eye of a creature is bigger than its head uh, it may be true but that world is not accessible to us in a sense that given the the condition situation the laws of nature and things like that we cannot actually actualize such a sentence in that sense we will understand simply a uh, accessibility relation crucial to understanding possible world semantics is actually accessibility relation so we are not just talking about something being necessary or possible but given some referent world or the context in which i am making a sentence whether certain thing is also necessary or possible so it means it will not allow any sentence to be possible so that's why accessibility relation is crucial in modern system to understand possible world semantics now let us give a more rigorous and technical definition to this idea of accessibility or defining this logical uh, model sentences if we have a sentence that uh, p is necessary or box p we will give truth valuation like this v in a pair of uh, uh, in a uh, in a round bracket box p and world will be true in other word the sentence that p will be true will be assigned a truth value t with respect to a world the blue prime even only if for every world that means world n in a set of all possible world we can assign a valuation over the sentence p in all the worlds and that in all the worlds p is actually true and that there is a relation from world prime the blue prime to all possible worlds the next one is possible how do we read a, a possible sentence that diamond p or it is possible that p how do we assign truth valuation to such a sentence it is like this that possible p with respect to certain world let us say the blue uh, prime will be true if and only if for some possible world that is uh, from the set of all possible world there is some world or at least one world uh, in uh, all the possible world such that you can find p being true in that world 
and that that work is accessible from uh, your reference or actual work. So uh, that is how you define uh, a possible sentence. We have just attempted to uh, uh, explain model sentence with respect to Kripkean model uh, using all these uh, technical uh, symbols and concepts. Uh, let me put it simply, what is Kripkean model or what are the basic constituents, constituents of Kripkean model? It will be constituted by three things. Uh, so it is actually an ordered triplet. W R V. W standing for a non-empty set of all possible worlds. R is an accessibility relation that can be defined over possible worlds. V is actually a valuation function that assigns to each atomic sentence uh, from the set of possible worlds. Uh, now we have just seen elliptic model logic that means uh, a sentence uh, which are claiming to be true necessarily or possibly or false in a sense uh, necessarily or possibly. Now just like that there can be different extension of uh, 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 sentential logic. Uh, in other words a sentence can be modified differently. For example I can say instead of Aristotle must be a logician I can also say uh, Aristotle ought to be a logician. That is one way, ought to be a logician. It can be modified like Aristotle has always been a logician. Or it is known that Aristotle is a logician. Uh, so depending on the kind of modification we give to propositional sentence, we can uh, come up with different model systems. So. When I say Aristotle ought to be a logician, I am introducing a word ought. These are called a uh, deontic concept. And any sentences involving deontic concepts like ought, ought not, may, may not, are called deontic, deontic sentences. Uh, and uh, we can have a logical systems around these deontic sentences, but we don't have time to explore uh, all the details of uh, deontic sentence, uh, deontic logic. So I'll just explain some minimum principles which go on to, to define or to uh, build a system of deontic logic. A sentence like it is obligatory that P can be symbolized O P and it is permissible that P can be symbolized by P P. Now what is this D? Uh, that means we will have a domain, domain of this course D. So, think of a world where there are a number of deontic sentences. Deontic sentences like it ought to be the case that uh, the earth is round or it is permissible that uh, uh, education is free. Think, things like that. Uh, there, there can be a set of deontic sentences. And how are we to assign truth value to this kind of deontic sentences? We will assign that with respect to a, 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 an idea or a notion called ideal world. In other words, uh, uh, with respect to a deontic world, a world where there are a lot of deontic sentences, there will be an ideal world. An ideal world is where all the deontic sentences are true, are actual or actualized. For example, when I say it ought to be the case that education is free for all education is free for all here in my actual world i am saying it ought to be the case but in the actual world, it is not but if uh, with respect to this uh, actual world there i can come up with a, a, an ideal world and imagine that in that world it is true that is the sentence is actualized that is education is really free for all so i am able to conceive such a world and with relation to this uh, ideal world I can make deontic sentences. So uh, the meaning of, of, of deontic sentences are defined in relation to uh, ideal worlds. So how are we to uh, now? Uh, how are we to understand uh, it is obligatory that p or it is permissible that p? When we say that uh, an obligatory sentence is true, 
we then we are saying with respect to a world worlds let us say world zero and the valuation of this sentence over this world is true if it is true then what we are saying is that uh, that sentence p uh, let us say education is free is actualized that means it is a, a state of affairs which is true in every deontic alternative world that means any kind of world which is uh, conceived to be better or ideal and in all those ideal worlds the sentence is actually true that is education is free when it is the case that we say that uh, uh, and and if all these worlds are accessible from um, actual world the refrain world in which you say it ought to be the case that p then we say it is true now it is permissible that p how do we understand this it is is actually a valuation with respect to a world zero and then we assign true to this sentence it is permissible p when there is at least one alternative deontic world uh, and that is a subset of all possible world and that is accessible from our world that means if there is one deontic alternative world uh, where uh, that sentence education is free is actual then we say it is possible that P. That means it is possible that education is free. So that is how uh, uh, we understand uh, a, a permissible sentence. Now from here we can go on to talk about other logical systems. Uh, it is epistemic logic. It is also an extension of sentential logic but we will do necessary modification to give a, a model character. So epistemic logic will deal with sentences like S knows that P. In other words, S is a cognitive agent or cognitive subject. Knows that P. P stands for proposition. So we can modify this by saying that uh, it is known that P. So in, instead of introducing the subject S, we'll just say it is known that P and it can be symbolized by KP. So using this uh, Kripkean model or semantics, we can uh, uh, understand uh, we can try to understand the meaning uh, of uh, this uh, sentence so we will need the model which is the blue set of all possible worlds and then r accessibility relation and some kind of valuation to function so here when we say that uh, it is known that p we say with respect to a world prime this is true even only if for every world which is a subset of all possible world our valuation uh, p is true in all possible world that means uh, if in all the possible world which are accessible from uh, that world or accessible to us uh, that p is true in other words uh, let us say aristotle is a logician then how to make it epistemic it is known that aristotle is a logician so in all the possible worlds which can be accessed from our world it is true that aristotle is a logician then we can claim that it is known that aristotle is a logician uh, likewise uh, there, there are different there may be a different characterization uh, for the same truth claim for example model uh, m stands for a model and with respect to the world the blue this model and the world semantically entails the truth of kp even only if for every world in set of all possible world such that uh, when there is a model and uh, and the world given p is true and there is a relation from the blue prime to the blue n in in that sense we can say that we know p or p is known or knowable with this, we have come to the end of uh, this module. Uh, but before I wind up, let us quickly revise what we have learned here. We have seen different systems of sentential logic. And here, we have tried to see that we can extend sentential logic to uh, build different uh, extensional logic, which we call it model logic. And we have also seen that there are different 
uh, there are different ways to modify a proposition and accordingly we can construct different model systems and uh, model system is actually uh, understood in relation to certain words called model verbs so these words will behave like uh, a kind of connective or operator but these are not actually uh, truth functional operator but rather they help us to understand the meaning or the context in which a model sentence can be made true or false and it is in this context that we have introduced uh, Kripkean semantics or possible world semantics and in the light of this possible world semantics we have tried to explain uh, different model sentences. Thank you.